Welcome to the NEC Big Game in round 11 of the Winfield Cup between Canterbury Bankstown and Manly Warringah. And today's match comes from the Bulldogs' Belmore Sports Ground. On the two occasions they met last season, Manly won the first encounter, but Canterbury took the honours the next time. In the 86 Premiership, only one point separates these two very much informed teams. The Canterbury side reads out like this with stars marking the players that are backing up for their second match in as many days. Potter, Peter Mortimer, Andrew Farrah, Chris Mortimer, Campbell, Hagen, Lamb as the captain, Langmack, Elias for Folks, Gillespie, Sergeant for Tunks, Bugden and Dunn. And here's the Manly team now. Gurr, Ronson, Close, Shearer, Blake, Cox, Hasler, Lyons, Cleal the captain, Gibbs, Hardy, Cochran and Daly. Manly has five going around for their second time. The referee today is Kevin Roberts. Canterbury running from right to left and into the sun in the first half. It's Gibbs. Ooh, Gibbs got up and played the ball and he let go with the left and he, he caught Sargent. Just on the uh, on the cheekbone. Here's Hardy now after the 22. The clearing kick off the boot of Mitchell Cox. Michael Potter. Campbell. Cochran and Daly, the chief tacklers. Gillespie gives over the top. Hardy underneath. Elias. Manly really going in and hitting in numbers. This is done. Out the back. He took three players with him. Done. This is uh, Hagen. Lamb. The kick will go over the dead ball line, so out for a 22 place kick to restart. Reserve grade was a, a thrilling affair 12 all, and in under 23s, 15 8 to Manly. Breeze coming down the ground in the first half, favouring Manly. We'll get a points assessment on that from Graham. In just a moment, this is Bill Hardy. Cox. That's the grubber kick, and it's going down to bounce up for Potter. If anything, it was too good a kick. Campbell. Lions over the top. Sergeant. Lamb, Elias, got away from the high tackle from Gibbs. Oh, backing him up is the man that does it so well, the best in the game probably, Terry Lamb. After John Elias was beaten, uh, was able to beat Gibbs, who went for a high tackle on him, Lamb was there, the ever-present Terry Lamb. You'll see it again. Here's Elias. And Lamb was there to go on with the job and score yet another try brought about by his persistence in backing up. Terry Lamb started it all when he crossed from the open back to the blind side, fired a pass onto John Elias. He shrugged off a tackle from Ron Gibbs and then beat the fullback with a step off the left foot. Terry Lamb knows exactly where to back up. He does it so easily. He just runs down the centre of the field, waits for the inside pass, and there's the result of it. Here it is again now from another angle. But when that tackle was missed on Elias, there was obviously going to be a problem to follow. And that problem was spelt L-A-M-B. And Baba picks up another try. And here he is, 24 years of age, L-A-M player of the year in 83, and having a superb season.
right in front. He picks up the extras and sends his Canterbury Bulldogs to a 6-0 lead in the NEC big game and only four minutes of time gone. Shearer. Peter Mortimer has Potter with him. Oh, big dummy and he... He sold them the dummy too and a good run by Peter Mortimer to within five metres of the halfway as the crowd applauds. Lamb, Hagen. Dunn. Paul Dunn trying to offload but just looking at the way Paul Dunn's running I'd say he's done Canterbury a favour by playing today he's on about one and a half legs I'd reckon crowd of around I suppose 11,000 beautiful day but, uh, not the crowd that one would have thought to see a match between Canterbury and Manly that could well be described as a grand final dress rehearsal Cox. There's a deliberate play. Shearer's going after it. I saw them do this in the state of origin. He's going to score. What a magnificent kick by Mitchell Cox. Shearer got deep so that when Cox actually kicked the ball, Shearer was going one way at 100 miles an hour and Canterbury was standing still. Here's Shearer coming down on the left of your screen almost. He had a mile start on Canterbury. Potter was up marking the fullback on the blind side. And Dale Shearer scores the try. But it was a magic kick from Mitchell Cox. This is one of those rare moments in rugby league that you treasure when you see it. Cox saw the Canterbury defence standing up, put through the kick into the end goal. And that was a great chase by Shearer. He showed plenty of pace to come up with a try. Dale Shearer, just 20 years of age. What a rugby league future he's got. As I said earlier, bound to be somewhere in that Maroon side for the state of origin. Al Cochran, the kicker, a chance to pull level at six all. kick a little bit uh, a little bit wide off the inside edge of the boot but still picking up the two points and Canterbury and Manly are locked together at six points all 17 minutes gone Chris Mortimer yeah. Hasler, Gibbs. Oh. Gillespie, the tackler. This is the tackle of Gillespie on Gibbs. Gibbs comes out of it, minus his headgear. And the touch judge came scurrying in. See what the result of this one is. It's going to be a manly penalty. Out the back for Lions. Now to Cox. Put down Canterbury's ball. Elias. 
Penalty to Canterbury, stealing the ball against Gibbs. Mortimer. Hagen. Farrow. Bugden. Lamb. Sergeant. I've gone. It wouldn't surprise if Canterbury went for the drop goal. It's back to Michael Hagan. Kick going over the dead ball line. Well, once again, the tactic by Canterbury is to try to drop the ball in goal. The, the tactic's a good one, but Michael Hagan just put too much beef on the ball this time and it went dead. Lions. Hasler. Cleal. Cox. And that's going to find touchdown on the 22. So another scrum will form. Canterbury will have the feed. No change to the score. Canterbury and Manley locked together at six points all. Scrums to Canterbury, 3 2 the penalties to Manley, and a penalty to Canterbury. It's against the marker, there's Hasler. There were so many players in this Canterbury side backing up after yesterday's game, the City Country Clash. Uh, obviously, there's not the same sort of intensity that they had against the Parramatta side. But too many times uh, when the ball has been taken up by the Canterbury side, that the man in possession has been left alone. We saw Gillespie there with very little support. And also, uh, Paul Dunn on occasions has hit the line, turned, and found nobody there. Graham, it's one of those games when the ball's not going more than two or three passes. Neither side seems willing at the moment to open it up. Yes, I'm a bit surprised. If I was Manly, I'd be very keen to open it up, especially with this uh, Canterbury pack, so many of them uh, backing up after yesterday's match. Uh, of course, Bobby Fulton's got it in their minds, a big kicking game, and, and at this stage, his tactics are, are fairly close to the mark. I think you'll certainly see him open the game up in the second half. Done. It was a good tackle on Dunn. I'm just trying to pick up who it was. It was Bill Hardy. A human mountain hardy with the, the pads that he's wearing. He's a big man as it is, but with the pads, the big number 11. He stands over plenty of ground. This is Elias. 
cast a big shadow, Bill. Hagen, Lamb. Out the back for Hagen. Hagen puts up the kick. Hardy takes it for Manley. Langmack, the tackler. Here's the replay of Bill Hardy taking the up and under. I don't think Bill knew that he was being chased so closely by Paul Langmack. All of a sudden he was there, and next minute he wasn't. And Manley on the first tackle. Well, that's a bonus for Canterbury. They had the ball from a penalty, started to put pressure on, and then lost it on the fourth. Manley have only been able to hold it for two, and they've turned it back to the Bulldogs. You can't do that against a good side like this. He's done now. Five metres out from the line, Elias. Well, he wasn't tackled. So Robert said, that's fine, you can pass from the ground. Terry Lamb. And now a penalty goes to Canterbury against Des Hasler. This is the NEC replay of the incident that that brought the penalty. And there's why he gave the penalty against Des Hasler. So it's almost a gift two points for the home team. Hasler not impressed. He's not talking to the referee, let me tell you. Roberts was at a completely different angle. That little shot was uh, was an indication, but of a far more confident Des Hasler. There's no way that he'd have uh, he'd have opened his mouth like that a couple of years ago. Terry Lamb. Easy one for him. And so the scoreline, Canterbury 8, Manly 6. You're watching the NEC Big Game. Hasler. Cleal. Yes! Cliffy Lyons, Potter's chasing and makes a try saving tackle. Two metres from the Canterbury line. And a penalty to Manley against Michael Potter. It was a good pass by Cleal. He got out from dummy half. Maybe right there is a sign of things to come. And Lyons was beautifully tackled by Potter. And then the referee has penalised Potter for failing to release the man. So here's the manly tap about to be taken. It was a fairly senseless penalty by Canterbury. Their defence was set. It was the fifth tackle on Manley. Canterbury only had one to make to get the ball back. But now, with just a few minutes to go before half-time, Manley have got the opportunity with six tackles. Cleo. Cleo. Leaning over the line almost and forced back. Manley deep and wide. Lions a long, long pass and Blake it is inside the Gibbs. Gibbs, can he get rid of the ball? Yes, Blake was over the line but forced back. Play by Blake. It's Cochran away from Dunn across to Cleal. Cleal is 10 metres out from the line. Cross for Hasler, now for Cox. Long pass out for Shearer. Campbell left his wing to make the tackle. That's five gone now against the Eagles. Here comes the kick. Cox, a high ball, a very good kick by Cox. And up they go above the pack, and Campbell comes down with it for Canterbury. Potter is injured for Canterbury. But that was the high-flying action here at Belmore. Lamb. Ronson.
And there's the siren for the end of the, the first 40 minutes. An absorbing encounter. 8 6 in favour of Canterbury. Here's Graham Hughes. Well, pretty much as predicted, I think we're seeing a clash between two pretty tired sets of forwards. In this next 40 minutes, I'll be looking for somewhat of a, a battle between the two back lines because of these forwards being so tired. I think Mitchell Cox holds the key. A big kicking performance from him in the first half. I think in the next half, I'll be looking for Cox to feed the likes of uh, Chris Close, Dale Shearer and Phil Blake a whole lot more. Yes, Stuart Davis in 15 is out there on the wing replacing Marty Gurr. Dale Shearer is shifting back into uh, the fullback position and at this stage unconfirmed but David Ronson or Phil Blake will be uh, alternating in, in that extra centres position. Uh, in a game that was so tired, as I said, just prior to the break, I'll be expecting Manly to start to open this game up a little bit more, try and run these Canterbury forwards around. Uh, but look for Canterbury, uh, they'll rely heavily on a big kicking game in this second half and I wouldn't be surprised the way they, they normally do, set themselves for early points via a field goal once down in Manly's territory. Chris Mortimer. Shearer, who scored that try in the first half for Manly, off a set move from winning a scrum. And Cox it was who put a delightful kick through, a long kick, and Shearer was first there. Here's the tackle counts. Well, they cancel each other out, don't they, with Dunn 21 and Lions 19 topping the respective camps. Shearer. Cox. So a scrum will go down as the ball was propelled forward. out clear long ball to close clear off from dummy half he did it in the latter part of the first half a run from dummy half I said at the time it might be the sign of things to come a bit more dummy half running lofted pass by Lyons the ball has gone to ground and Canterbury come up with it it seemed a rather loose pass to be throwing but well, it was very lucky, really, for Manly that Sandy Campbell decided to go in and elected for a ball and all tackle because the ball was sitting up there to be intercepted. Done. Potter. Ooh. The waiting shoulder of Phil Bailey. Lamb. Inside. Lost the ball. Gibbs has it. Cleal. Ronson. Davis. Hardy. Cleo. Three Canterbury players combining to put the big fellow down. Hasler, Cox, Cochran, Cox, Farrah takes the bomb and the tackle of Dale Shearer. And you see replay. I don't know that Manly used up their six tackles as best they could then. I think the tactics that are going to win them this game are to use their big men, the likes of Bill Hardy and Phil Daly up the middle on the first and the second rucks. Then say on the third, Noel Cleal just on the fringe. And that's the time to get the ball out wide on the fourth and fifth to Chris Close. Three and four passes wide. Those are the tactics that are going to worry Canterbury. Blake.
Swanson. Hasler. Away from Elias, away from Chris Mortimer, taken by Sandy Campbell. Lyons. Hardy. Around the legs was Sargent. Daly. Five gone for the Eagles. Cox. Held the kick back into a little opening and gave the ball to a Canterbury player. Mortimer in some pain over there. There's the, the NEC replay of Cox. He's been mixing his game up perfectly today, Mitchell Cox. His Lamb. Back to Gillespie. And the referee has ruled that it went forward from Lamb to Gillespie. That's all I can fathom from the ruling. The touch judge has come in to make a report about the manly number 10. That's Ron Gibbs. Did you spot anything, Graham? Well, I think the touch judge may have been picking Ron Gibbs up. Uh, coming in late over the top, it was, well, it was touch and go, whether you call it a high tackle or not, Ray, but you've got to remember that this man coming off now has been called over and spoken to on three occasions and quite possibly could have been spoken to on, a, on say, two or three others. Well, he's got ten minutes in the sin bin. And still it goes on. Let's see if we can pick up this incident involving Gibbs. And got the length. Shearer. No change to the half time score. 8 6 Canterbury. Shearer. Hardy. against the Canterbury marker, Sergeant. Sideline comment as Manley prepared to take the tap. Well, it's something that we said last week here. They come up with a mistake, Manly, purely and simply because I think teams continue to play to Canterbury's strength. They keep on turning the ball back inside or taking the ball straight up the middle of the rucks. Canterbury renowned for their forward depth. I know they've somewhat tired after backing up from yesterday uh, from that city country clash. Uh, but Mitchell Cox is the key. I said it prior to half time. He's renowned from his rugby union days for possessing a very, very long pass. And that's what uh, Manly should be looking for. A cutout situation should be picking up Dale Shearer and Chris Close storming up out wide. Done. Yes, play on. That's Hagen. Straight to Ronson for Manly. Davis. Close. Close has decided if the ball's not going to come to him, he's going to go and get it. Cleo. Cleo. Good strong running by Close and Cleo. Back to back. Hasler. Cox. That's Lyons. Through Ronson to Shearer. That's, that's where Manley can, can do damage. The last thing the opposition wants to see is Daly bring the ball up, Hardy bring the ball up, and then Cleal on the fringe of the ruck bringing it up, and finally Close getting it three and four out. That'd have to damage any opposition. Once um, Potter 
Great take by uh, Michael Potter. Potter injured for Canterbury. Two other Canterbury players injured. In fact, Dunn, a sergeant, he's being brought off. And uh, let's go to Graham for the changes. Well, coming on for Canterbury for Mark Sargent in 24 will be Peter Johnston, uh, who was fresh back from England after a stint over there, uh, and those will be in great form in the reserve grade fixture. Only just back this week. What's the story on young Sergeant uh, Graham? Well, it's not a nice way to make a debut. At this stage, they're testing him for possible uh, medial ligament damage. Hasler, Hasler draws the last line, Davis, Davis, Davis has scored, Manley has hit the front, ten points to eight. So it was dashing Des Hasler who decided to run wide, he, he absolutely obligated the wing three quarter for Canterbury. He drew and committed the winger, and then he left space for Davis to work in. He has put this try down purely to the pace of Hasler. He was able to clear the half, the lock, and the centre, and gave the overlap to Davis. Davis never had a lot of sideline to work with, but what he had, he made the most of. You can see it here, Hasler heading wide, timed his pass to perfection, and Davis does the rest. 22 minutes of time to go. There she goes. Looks good. He's got it from the sideline. Oh, mighty Malcolm. Manly 12, Canterbury 8. Daly. Gillespie underneath him. Cox tried to get the kick in. Gillespie cleans it up for Canterbury. Paul Dunn can hardly lift himself off the ground. He... Five metres out from the line. The Canterbury fans went up and then went down. Now they come up again. Johnston. Chris Mortimer. Michael Potter. Four tackles gone for the Bulldogs. Lamb with the up and under. It's a good kick. And it's over the dead ball line. Coming out to the 22 for the restart. Off the boot of Terry Lamb. This was the replay, the NEC replay of the action. Manly have won two scrums against the feed. That makes the third, and that's a great position to come up with a scrum against the feed. You've got the opposition in their own quarter. Both sets of players are extremely tired. Cliff Lyons within 15 metres of the line. Now to Shearer. Long cutout pass to Ronson. And held there by Chris Morton. Cleo. 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 Yes! He got back as if to say, give me that football on the next play and I am going to score a try. And that's about all he said and all he did. And there wasn't anything in the world that was going to stop Noel Cleal from reaching this try line. He had convinced himself that he was going to score. This is a great captain's knock by Noel Cleal. He's decided to put this game beyond doubt. He'd be tackle over tackle and just charged over between the uprights. Noel Cleal, at 27 years of age, still one of the game's most devastating runners, scores the try that has probably put the seal on this one. 
Cochran can make it 18 points to eight. That he does. And the Manly Sea Eagles lead by 18 points to eight with about 12 minutes of time to go. So, Lang Tommy, here's Graham. Well, I think you've got to hand it to Manly coach uh, Bob Fulton. I was fairly convinced that in the first, uh, say, 10 to 15 minutes of the second half that Manly might have started to spread the ball a whole lot more, tried to make this Canterbury uh, forward pack even somewhat tired to try and run them around, but he persisted with taking the ball up the middle of the rucks. They came up with some errors uh, a little while ago, and it looked as though the game might have been turning back to Canterbury, uh, but Noel clear on those sorts of guys have come into their own. Full credit to Bobby Fulton. Play by Ronson. Good tackle by Farrah. Cox. Tackle's gone. What will Cox do with it this time? Nothing. Cochrane, grab a kick ahead. Ball loose on the ground. Tuned up there by Canterbury Bankstown. But a knock on has taken place. Close, 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 yes! Oh, the two big men have put it together back to back. Cleal a couple of minutes ago, and Close has fired off the second barrel. Des Hasler scampered across the paddock. He dummied once, he dummied twice, and then Close carried Paul Langmack over. That was a piggyback try. When Close elects to go, he's almost unstoppable this close to the line. He charged onto a, onto a pass, he hit defence, but there's no way that they were going to hold him. So Paul Langmack actually rides him across the line, but big Chris Close, he too at 27 years of age, goes in for another manly try. the problem being with matches played the day after City Country is uh, you seem to have an inconclusive result no matter which way it goes it just seems to be a shame that that's the way it has to be I wish there were a solution the kick has been hooked by Cochrane no goal but they don't really need them anymore they're leading by 22 points to eight Manly over Canterbury That's the kick for Cox an astute game from Cox today. Potter. Whoops, a daisy. It's classified it as a dangerous tackle. Now, Cleal is being called out as captain. It was Ronson and Hasler. And Gibbs is being called over. Well, I think Gibbs must have said something to the referee. It's, it's obviously something to do with back chatting. Farrah. Gillespie. Hagen. Just wondering how close to an absolute meltdown is the patience of Kevin Roberts in this match today. Penalty to Canterbury against the Manly players for not getting off the tackle player. Gone over the touch in goal line. Off the penalty. Be a drop kick restart. That must go the 10 metres. Yes, with just that question mark on just how much patience Roberts has to show. I was going to make the comment that he's given an exhibition here today that I think has been 
indicative of the number one referee in this city. And I don't mean that to be as an offence to his main challenger at the moment, Mick Stone. Bugged him. There's the siren, it's all over. It's all over for Canterbury today, anyway. Manly 22. Canterbury banks down eight. And what a second half of football the Eagles laid on. 22 for Manly. Shearer, Davis, Cleo, close. Tries. Cochrane, three goals. Lamb for Canterbury, the try. And he kicked two goals.